For today's exercise, we're going to be looking at a two-point perspective of model. Here you can clearly see the front view. I've taken the liberty of marking the base corners as A1, A2, other side B1, B2. Then you'll see the same points also in the top view, point A there and point B. So this corner in fact represents two points in the front view and the same there. So you, obviously there's some height there. Then we have a web that runs from the corner of the base goes to the top of the prism here you can see it as well the webbing on that side and then we have a prism with a groove cut out on the side so to start off with you want to make sure that you get your vanishing points correct and that you label them that's the most important step that you can do on any two point so to start you go to the top view and you can clearly see that the angle on the left side is 60 degrees then if we go to the right side we can see that the angle is 30 and these two angles together must always give me 90 degrees so to find the left vanishing point I go to the stationary point put my set right down again when you draw the construction line don't draw it all the way through because you can obstruct your drawing on this side so just draw it where you need it On the left, you can just draw a little bit of the line that side. Then you're going to go straight down towards the horizon line from the picture plane. And there you can see that I've clearly marked the points. And you want to label that the left vanishing point. So the left vanishing point there, you get marks with the label as well. You get marks of the construction and the point itself. Make sure that you do that correctly. Then the other side, put our 60 degree set square down. Again, you don't want to draw the line all the way. It's not technically wrong if you do, but just draw small parts of it on the right side. And then you go straight down towards the horizon line from the picture plane. Right, so now that we have our vanishing points, we want to start with the base, which is just a prism. It's basically just a block. And you want to take a ruler that has a considerable amount of length. And please don't make the mistake of going from the stationary point, go from the starting point, because A is resting on the picture plane. Therefore, A will also rest on the ground line here. Again, you draw a construction line going to the vanishing point on the right and you also do it on the left side. So there you can see the two lines going left and right. So the argument there is since this line is pointing to the left, therefore it will go to the left vanishing point. This one is pointing to the right, therefore this one will go to the right vanishing point. But it also has a height here that you want to carry over so you're going to take your point your line a b and you're going to take the height across and you're going to mark it on your front corner and then you're going to draw the height to the vanishing point as well Right, so there you can see the two construction lines on each side going to the vanish point. So now we actually have the height of our prism for the base. Now to get the width on this side and the length on that side, you go to your top view. So the rule is any point that you take from the top view, with this one, this one, or this one, what you do is you go towards the stationary point. But when you hit the picture plane, you go straight down vertically. And, that, and then you can mark down your width and your length. So you go to the top view and you go towards the stationary point you can see it's lined up with the stationary point here and you draw the construction line but you stop at the picture plane then also for point B here you go to the stationary point you draw the line but you stop when you hit the picture plane over here now you can take these two points straight down and that will give you your width and your length
there you can see it so now we have the front of the base and we have the left side of the base so automatically if you want to find the back corners you go to the point here on the right at the top and you're going to the point on the left and you go to the opposite vanishing points So there you can see our base clearly this line going to the right, that one going to the left, and there's the, our base. Now for now you can actually go and make some of the corners solid that you know are going to be visible. Now the reason why I'm leaving the back corners and construction lines is that the prism that is going to be on top might obscure some of that detail so I'm leaving that in construction on purpose now to draw the prism that's on top of the base you can clearly see that none of these points actually rest on the picture plane so we cannot take them straight down like we did for example with this front corner so there's more than one way to do it but for today I'm going to take these lines and I'm going to project them until they rest on line AB so obviously going to the front you can see that this prism ha will have four different heights but the bottom one is certainly resting on top of the base we, so we're going to start with that one by first using this corner of AB so to do that you lengthen the line until it touches the corner there the same for the one on the right side And I'm going to label those two points C and D. So this is C and D there. Then what you can do is you can follow the normal procedure. So we're going to take C and D. And since we have C here on the corner, we can do the same here. So I'm actually going to take C to the SB. You take it to, towards the SB. You stop at the picture plane. You do the same for D and then you can take them straight down right right so this would in fact be C on the perspective and that would be D on the perspective. But now remember it's not C and D that we want. We want to find these points that's inward. So to do that we go, the logic there is, so from C the line goes to the left. From C the line goes to the left and the same with D it goes to the left. Therefore we take both these points to the left vanishing point. There you can see the construction lines going to the left. Now we can actually go and mark down these four points on these two lines. You can actually see these two are very very close but you have to try and differentiate between them and then of course they go straight down so this one would go down on the back corner and we mark it on the construction line then we take the back corner down as well we mark it there now technically if I took this point to the right it would automatically also give me that point again doesn't matter, matter what method you use then we go to this one 
So there you can see that point, the first one, as we marked it on the construction. And last but not least, And there you can see the four points. And this is actually where the base would rest on the bottom base. Right now, to carry on to simplify things, I'm going to number it as well. So if this is point C and that's D, I'm going to mark these points simply as E. And that one is F. Okay, so E and F, if we had to go to the front view, would obviously this would be E2, and that would be E1, and that would be F1, and that would be F2. So F2, F1, E1, and E2. All right, so to simplify them, I want you to imagine trying to find this surface here, this shape, that looks almost like the letter C. You would go from A to C, then you go in, and then be able to find all the detail on EF, this profile that you see here going around in the front view. So to do that, <coughs> we're going to use the front corner again. We already have the base, so I'm going to go to the second level, and I'm going to take this height across and I'm going to mark it here on the front corner so that would be this level then automatically I'm also going to go to the third level which is here I'm going to take it across and mark it on the front corner as well and then of course the fourth level or the top I'm going to take that across as well I'm going to mark it here on the front corner so there you can see one two three four heights then you take the three points to the vanishing point on the right but you stop when you hit the corner of C so you can clearly see there there's C the corner All right I stopped there on C and I do it for the same same for the others Right, so from A to C it went to the right, so I went to the right vanishing point for each of these heights. So once you get to C, we're going into E. With other words, I'm going to the left, therefore I can take these three heights and take them to the left as well. So there you can see I went from A to C and then I went to the left vanishing point. So I'm using this corner on C to actually bounce off my detail going to the left vanishing point. So one, two and three. Okay. So then to find the detail for an EF, in fact that entire profile, it goes to the right again. Therefore I can take these three heights and I can take it to the right vanishing point. And again, you can stop when you hit the corner of F. So there you can see the top view I went zigzag, did the same thing for all the levels in the perspective as well. So now we actually have the lines that these points will rest on. So to plot the actual points now, we already have the points for E and we already have the points for F. Okay. So now we just need to find these two levels so that we can get this groove being cut out and that's very easy since we already have that line. So we have to take this point to the SP and down.
you can see the line going down so there's the letter C or that profile that I actually want right so there you can see the profile so now obviously since we have the profile all we need to do is, do is take these corners there there and there and take it to the left so there we're going to take these same corners here and here and here we're going to take it to the left vanishing point and then we're just going to take the back corner which we already have we already have the width there and then we could just finish up with the prism on top Right, last but not least, we want to do the web that you can see here on the left side. Here you can see it in the front view, and that one's fairly easy. We already have the edge on top and the edge at the base. So we're just going to take these points to the SP and down, and then we can plot that as well. 